Hello, friends, and welcome to the full version of the fruits of the Spirit. Now, remember, there are going to be some similarities and some individual fruit in a person's life, but that does not mean that you do have the indwelling Spirit. Now, remember, the message that I'm giving is from a biblical point of view. It's from the Word of God. So, remember, we also have our own opinions on certain things, but that is where you have likes and dislikes because you're basing it on your wisdom, which is very, very limited compared to an infinite God. And the fruits of the Spirit is <clears throat> revealed to us through His own words. So it's not a matter of what we think it should or shouldn't be. It's just how it is. Now, the first one that we're going to get into in a little more uh, detail is love. Now, do you remember from some of my earlier videos that Jesus gave one final commandment before he left, which is also the foundation of the scriptures. That foundation is on love. I'll start out with the most quoted scripture is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is how Jesus also says that the world will know us by the love we have one for another, referring to Christians. You see, we are the light of the world. So we are left to demonstrate Jesus's way of life. Now, remember, people still think, oh, you can't live a certain way in righteousness or holiness on earth, but that is demanded to enter heaven. Not when Jesus returns. It has to be done now, presently, before he returns. Okay, so this love demonstration is an indication that we belong to Christ. Now, love is not just for those who love us. It is a unconditional divine love. Now, in the Bible, there are, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, four different words for love. And the significance of that is that there is a word used when referring to God, as in the love that God has for us, or, or a divine love. So I believe that that divine love is eros okay and there's a divine uh, love between god and us there is a love between a husband and wife there is a love for family and there's a love between friends so there's four different words which i've already given a um a little message on the teaching on that now so i think that that should sum it up for love it is not just referring that some people may think as soon as you say that is um okay you just love your family or it's um referring to an intimate situation no more important is that you love your enemies that is the whole purpose of the bible for jesus dying the love for his enemies although he died for those who love him he also died for those who hate him. So it is more honorable to demonstrate your love for those who hate you. Then you're truly a child of God if you have love one for another. Okay, we're going to move on to joy. Now, joy is... Some people confuse joy. I have a family member that had actually reversed the two when I said asked what was the difference between happiness and joy so I'll just get into the meaning of of this now happiness is based on 
your mood, your feeling, what, what you do. Happenstance. It is what you do that causes happiness. So when you stop doing that thing that gave you that happy feeling, it goes away. See, that is kind of like why people get drunk or use drugs. It's because of the temporary feeling that they have of happiness. You see, joy is of a divine nature because it's, you're sustained in a state of joy <laughs> without doing anything. But here is the most powerful part of that. No one can take your joy from you. You know, you like something they can take that makes you happy. You can lose like, you know, you can lose that and then the happiness goes away. But the joy, no one can take your joy. Now, that joy is a sustaining uh, thing. What do I mean by that? It, it, it's constant. It's morning, noon, and night. I find myself sometimes waking up and uh, I have a, uh, wake up and the first thing I smile, oh, thank you, Lord. You see, you're not going to have an excuse when Jesus returns to say, oh, I didn't have time to pray. If you even spend a few seconds on this video, you had time to pray. You will not have an excuse. So joy is that's given from the Holy Spirit and the indwelling. So it's maintaining that in all circumstances. Now, don't confuse that with some common sense things. Go, come on. You can't be joyful to see bad things happening in the world or to you. But throughout that circumstance, you will find joy in many things. I cannot explain that to you because you, you have to be in that uh, particular situation. And with the Holy Spirit, you, you'll seek and find the joys through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The natural person is going to find it very difficult to accept some of the things that I'm going to be preaching in this fruit of the spirit, because the scripture says the natural person or the worldly person cannot understand the spiritual things because you must have the indwelling spirit. In other words, the, uh, what is it? The Omega code, you know, it's like a decipher. So you need the Holy spirit to decipher the code or to or the access to the Wi-Fi to reveal that information to you. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So joy, happiness, happenstance based on circumstances. Joy is continuous. I can say that because I've had it for years on a daily basis. Have I ever gotten upset throughout? Of course, but the joy is still there. That's it. Now, peace. Peace, wow, peace in any circumstances. You know, things didn't go your way. You know, you, you, you know, this person might swing. You feel like punching someone in the face. But somehow it doesn't matter what the outside circumstances are. You can get angry. The scripture clearly says, be angry, but do not sin. But the anger that you sense or feel or express is that of what is contrary to God's words. So it's a righteous anger. <clears throat> but you find peace in the circumstances. It's not much to say with that. And now there are people that remember I said, Individually, you can have these things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the indwelling spirit. I'll explain it at the end. Now, we're going to move on to patience. But this is one that I know a lot of people have, but most people lack this one in society that I noticed. In a line, 
driving in public is that there, there's you want it now look the, the internet everything is fast i don't want to wait give it to me now so the patience which the culture refers to as a virtue in the past that was more prevalent in society but i'm going to just add this is that that was the time that um jesus or god was taught in schools so part of the fruits was also taught so more people you would find that would practice this some without the spirit and then it would be demonstrated by many with the spirit of patience now naturally a loving parent will have some degree of patience for their children a good teacher in any field will have patience for their students and anyone in authority should also demonstrate a certain level of patience okay so that should do it for that kindness now kindness is you see it on on social media a lot but here's the thing you someone records someone giving a shirt or giving food all good and well in its place but when you do that it is clearly written when you do your good deeds acts of kindness it should be done in private now if someone sees you and make that known that's a different story but if you go out there which is in scripture when Jesus was saying how they have the march and band pretty much this is another word for it in front of them tooting the horn letting them know that they're coming through and they're giving little tides over here throwing little money over here and doing some good deeds that is not how kindness should be demonstrated now here is a false sense of kindness you're doing that for people to to be seen also some people do this and expect something in return that is not kindness oh i'm going to do this for you now in hopes that you'll do it back for me later true biblical and divine acts of kindness is to do something for someone that it is impossible for them to repay it the most severe the most powerful the most divine act of kindness that was ever done and can never be topped is the very act of Jesus climbing on the cross to give his life for me and for you because i could never repay that debt nor can you or anyone who accepts that offer of kindness now generosity there's uh, some similarities here but in the generosity part it's people also use this to give expecting something in return many do that if i give you this then how much more can i get on top of it that's also in scriptures that when you lend you know don't expect um uh interest on your your lending but it is not only talking to or about money your time how much is your time worth you see it all ties up and and they're all in, interconnected because your generosity of your time could also is also linked to patience and kindness but they each have their own place now you have something and you know the other person doesn't if you give it to them the shirt off your back so to speak they cannot repay you you're going to be out of a shirt but you have the means in which to get it back what is more important than this with the generosity is that 
when you give your time, effort, or means, financial, whatever it is, you're doing it in the sense that you're doing it for God, hoping that they cannot repay you. Remember what Jesus said about, I was hungry, thirsty, and, and imprisoned, and uh, sick, and you came and did all these things for me? But yet, none of us today can do that. What are we going to see Jesus to do it physically? However, he says, when you do this to others, you have done it to me. So generosity is a way to show your love also to Jesus himself. Not only that when you do these things, it'll also come back to you. Now, that can be taken out of context. So listen to my words carefully and don't twist them. Now, if you're doing it for the hopes of getting something in return, it doesn't work. And God already knows the intent of your heart. But those who are doing it just randomly because of the nature that's indwelling them, that those are the ones that will reap now. Because we don't need rewards, uh, certain things, when Jesus returns. It's going to be irrelevant. All those things are going to fade away and disappear. We won't need them in, in the world anymore. There are certain things that only apply to this physical realm at this moment. Okay? So, that's it for generosity. Now, remember, Jesus also, also said, Give, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Okay? Now, faithfulness. Are you a faithful person? Hmm? You might think, okay, can I trust you in this situation? Trustworthy, faithfulness. Okay, what about your relationship? Do you go sleep around or are you a cleanse person that you value your temple and you're faithful in your relationship? Are you faithful at work? See, but trustworthy, they, they're all the fruits are linked. However, it is more important to think of your faithfulness to God. Because you can cheat on God with other gods. Things that you put before Him, even the person. Many people say, oh, my children, I love them so much. And, that, and they'll even put their children, some people put their animals, their job, their possession before God. Now, this is where you get the thing that people think that God disapproves of wealth. He doesn't. I'll give a sermon on that with biblical evidence. Now, this faithfulness is that this man put his faith in his possession. So Jesus knew that he valued that more than Jesus himself. So he said, you need to get rid of that out of your life so you can see clearly and focus on me, the true riches. But he chose his possessions. That's the story of the, the rich man and Jesus, who Jesus, it says that Jesus loved him. But the only thing that was lacking is that he put his possessions first. So you must be a faithful lover of Jesus. Your heart must be to him. My future wife's heart must love him first. And me second. So that is the guideline, the caliber in which you must measure faithfulness. Are you faithful to God? And let me tell you something. If you do that, and if that is in place without missing any of the others, your life will be beautiful. You can only experience it for to, to understand what I'm saying. Faithfulness in all aspects. God first and in every other aspect of your life because you're a reflection of Jesus. Now, gentleness. Gentleness. You can also, gentleness. Remember what the Bible said about Moses was the most meek of all men? Now, it doesn't mean that he was a punk. Or pushover gentleness which I said in an earlier sermon is that you can call it or refer to it as controlled power 
controlled power. Gentleness is a, a loving mother that had a rough day, but yet instead of taking it out on a crying child that that is unconsolable, but yet she's gentle. Okay, that's one world view, and then I'm gonna just give a divine view. Jesus could have wiped us all out easily, but yet he controlled his power without blowing us into smithereens for now until later he comes in and set things in order. But gentleness is, is a manner of the way we live and treat others. Don't get easily upset. Remember, you can be angry at someone for the way they're living. And then you must say something in a gentle manner. You know, iron sharpens iron. You know, so... But in this sense, when someone comes off aggressive at you, you must be the opposite. But you cannot do that if your, your ego is challenged then that gentleness might be um, uprooted. So then there are those without the indwelling spirit, but may demonstrate a form of gentleness. I'm referring to what is of the spirit. Okay, now we're going to conclude with self-control. Now, self-control, do you have that? As a martial artist, that is a prized possession, manner of being, because you must know how to control your, your prowess and don't use it in a negative way. It's very easy to hurt someone. Do you know that the most dangerous... All right, let me ask this. Which is most dangerous? The black belt or the white belt? A family member, many family members and, and friends and people have asked, do you have the answer? The answer is the white belt. Here's why. Now, imagine a person putting a apple on your head and you have two contestants, one a black belt and one a white belt. Now, which one of them would you like to attempt to kick the apple off your head? Now, you see my point? The black belt is more skilled, more dangerous, ability-wise. But in kicking the apple off your head without breaking your face, the white belt is probably going to kick you in the head because of the lack of self-control, control over the body, to be able to accurately pinpoint from your eyes, looking at the object and sending your foot to travel through space to connect to that object without hitting anything else in its path. That's a form of self-control that I can give you an analogy something to hold on to so self-control in the line self-control driving now it is also self-control when you go out nobody made you take the extra drink or the extra shots or the drugs you can have a drink Jesus and disciples people in the Bible drank but the self-control is to not get drunk. So you see, self-control. So recap, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you have all of these, then you have the indwelling spirit. Not one, not two, not five, all. And its attributes, meaning 
other words can be used to describe these because they complement each other and they work together because one of them is connected you know they all work together the fruits of the spirit no born again christian can say they don't have it and if you say that means you're not born again because you're not more powerful that can override the gifts of God and the gift of God is Jesus and the outpouring of the spirit when you put your faith in him and that is how we demonstrate in the world as salt light and children of God through the guidance of the holy spirit I'm Pastor Rich, Walking Ministries Online, and I will see you soon.